Apple currently sells four different iPad models and they all have their various strengths and weaknesses. We're gonna consider all these iPads here, including the entry-level iPad 7, which is $329. There's also the iPad mini, which obviously lives up to its name pretty well. You can see it fits in my pocket here. And that device sells for $70 more, but it has a whole lot more going for it as well. We'll talk about that. And then there is the iPad Air 3. It's basically a larger iPad mini with smart keyboard support. And that sells from $499. And then finally, last but not least, the iPad Pro. Both an 11 inch model and a 12.9 inch model. This device right here is the flagship iPad that Apple offers and it starts at $7.99. Check out the full video right now, but first a word from our sponsor. 9to5Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Zugu Case, maker of Amazon's highest rated iPad case. The new Muse case for the 7th gen iPad features a robust bumper and industry leading drop protection and design that can protect your iPad from a five foot drop even on the concrete. But for me, it's all about the innovative built-in adjustable stand with eight magnetic angles. It gives you a super secure viewing angle on any surface, flat or not. And don't forget about the built-in elastic pocket to store your Apple Pencil. The Muse case comes with a free one-year warranty, sleep-wake functionality, and it's perfect for travelers, business people, students, and anyone else looking for a durable, dynamic, and sleek iPad 7 case. Special thanks to Zugu for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube, and hit the link in the description to get your iPad 7 Zugu Muse case today. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, so let's start at the very bottom of the iPad lineup with the 7th generation baseline iPad. This thing starts at $329, but you can often find it on sale for just $250. It comes with a 10.2 inch display, so it's an upgrade over the previous generation version. And in my review, I called it the best deal in tech. And I don't just mean the best iPad deal, but of all tech, this is one of the best deals. For $250 on sale, you can find an iPad that can run all the latest and greatest applications pretty well with that A10 Fusion system on a chip. It's not the most powerful iPad, obviously, but it's very, very capable. It comes with Touch ID biometric authentication, so there's no Face ID here, but that's okay. Now, the biggest beef that I always have with these entry-level iPads is that the screen is not laminated. So you have a noticeable air gap and that air gap promotes glare. There's also a lack of an anti-reflective display coating as well. Now you get an eight megapixel camera with F2.4 aperture. The camera is decent, but no one really buys an entry-level iPad for the camera. If you really want an iPad that can shoot good video and photos, you wanna look at the higher end models. Now the big change with the seventh generation iPad is the adoption of the smart connector and that allows you to connect a smart keyboard folio or even one of Logitech's new keyboards with the integrated trackpad. So the adoption of the smart connector really is a major win for the entry-level iPad. It transforms it from just a regular tablet to a tablet that can be used as a laptop. And there is no better accessory to demonstrate this ability than the Logitech Combo Touch with integrated trackpad. So this is a keyboard that uses the smart connector and it has a built-in trackpad, which is excellent. So you can actually control your iPad with the trackpad, just like you could a laptop. And don't forget, there's Apple Pencil support here with the seventh generation iPad. So this device for $329, often found for $250, is just a, a downright steal, in my opinion. And most people should opt for this entry-level iPad because it provides the best bang for the buck across the entire iPad lineup. Now, granted, there are reasons why you would want to upgrade to a different device, but for the most part, if you're new to tablets, if you're new to the iOS ecosystem, or if you just wanna save money, you're gonna be extremely happy with this device. Now, that being said, the entry-level iPad isn't for everyone, and we're gonna talk about some of the other iPad models right now. Now, if portability is the most important thing to you above everything else, then the iPad mini is the tablet for you. This device starts at $399 and it comes in just one size with a very portable 7.9 inch display. Now don't be fooled by its small stature because this little device is a beast. 
It is basically an iPad Air 3 squished down into the form factor of an iPad mini. So you get the performance of an iPad Air 3, most of the features of the iPad Air 3, and the display of an iPad Air 3. Actually, the display on the iPad mini is even better because it has the highest PPI of any iPad in Apple's entire lineup. And here you can see it supports P3 wide color as well, among other things like True Tone, etc. It features a laminated display like the iPad Air 3, but like I was saying, 326 PPI is higher than the iPad Pro as far as pixel density is concerned. And you can tell just looking at this thing, it looks amazing. Uh, that screen quality is just second to none. Now, as far as camera is concerned, not a great camera, eight megapixel camera, similar to what you'll find in the iPad 7, but the front facing camera is actually a big improvement over the iPad 7. We're talking 1.2 megapixels versus seven megapixels. But again, you're usually not buying an iPad for the cameras, but when it comes to sheer performance, this thing outclasses the iPad 7, no doubt. It comes with an A12 Bionic processor, same processor found in the iPhone 10s, 10s Max, 10R. It supports the Apple Pencil, the Logitech Crayon, but it doesn't support Apple's smart keyboard because they simply don't make a smart keyboard this small and it's really just not practical to make a hardware keyboard this small. But that being said, the iPad mini is the best one-handed typing experience you'll find on a tablet. You can easily grab it with two hands and start typing like you're, like you're typing on your iPhone almost. So this is the device to get if portability trumps everything else, but you still want a great screen and a lot of power under the hood. Now, speaking of power, the iPad Air is basically the bigger brother of the iPad mini. And the great thing about the iPad Air is that it works with the smart keyboard. It's actually a 10.5 inch device. So it has a screen that's about 0.3 inches larger than the entry level $329 iPad. So you're gonna get a larger screen, a much higher quality screen here on the iPad Air. And of course you get that A12 Bionic processor underneath the hood. Now compared to the entry level iPad 7, the iPad Air 3 is noticeably thinner, living up to its name at only 0.24 inches thick. But what's surprising is that the iPad Pro is actually 0.1 inches thinner than the iPad Air, so something to keep in mind there. So the iPad Mini 5 and the iPad Air 3 share a lot of DNA. The only difference between these two devices besides size is the fact that it includes a smart connector on the iPad Air 3 to allow you to attach something like this, the Apple Smart Keyboard. And the great thing about having the Smart Keyboard is that it basically transforms your tablet into something you can write like a laptop with. But with the new mouse and trackpad support in iPadOS 13.4 and higher, you can pair a mouse or a trackpad and control your iPad Air 3 that way. And Logitech also makes a combo touch for the iPad Air 3. But compared to the iPad 7, one of the biggest differences is screen quality. Just like the iPad mini, this thing has a glorious screen, not quite as high of a pixel per inch rating here on the iPad Air 3 compared to the mini, but the screen is glorious. It is a P3 wide color display. It supports True Tone. It features a laminated digitizer, so it feels like you're touching the content on screen. Of course, there's an anti-reflective coating as well. If I had to describe the iPad Air 3, I'd describe it as a slightly larger, much more polished version of the entry-level iPad. So here's that entry-level iPad from the previous generation, the iPad 6. We're gonna compare that to the iPad Air 3. Mainly just wanna pay attention to the thickness differences here since the iPad 7 is almost the same size screen-wise and basically the same footprint from a length and width perspective. And that's why the smart keyboard will work with the iPad Air 3 along with the iPad 7, the same exact smart keyboard because the bezels on the iPad Air 3 are actually just smaller to fit that larger display in, in the same footprint. And you can see some of those bezel differences here when comparing the iPad 6 with the iPad Air 3. And on the entry level iPad, you have that undesirable air gap that promotes reflectivity among other things. And here's the iPad Air 3, no air gap. So it feels like you're actually touching the app icons on screen. And then notice the reflectivity here. There's the iPad entry level model. I'm gonna move it over to the iPad Air 3. Almost no reflectivity there with those AirPods. And the iPad Air 3 supports P3 wide color. So I'll just tap that. You notice the 
little image there on the right for the iPad Air 3, you can actually see that thanks to the wider range of color available on that display. And remember the iPad Air 3 features the same A12 Bionic chip that you'll find in the Mini, so you're gonna have a lot of power under the hood to handle whatever you throw at it. Now, speaking of power, you have the new iPad Pro, which is recently released. It comes in a 11 inch and 12.9 inch model, starts at 799. And this is the device that you want if power is what's important to you, if camera is what's important to you, if design is what's important to you, this is the one to get. Obviously, it costs way more than the entry level iPad, but it also has a lot more technology under the hood, like this LiDAR scanner, which is gonna have huge AR implications. But the design of the iPad Pro is something else to consider. It's the thinnest iPad Apple offers. It has those squared off edges, has a smart connector on the rear, which has some interesting applications we'll talk about in a little bit. It has that quad speaker setup. So this has by far the best sound of any iPad, the best microphone setup of any iPad as well. Uh, this thing is a beast from a pure hardware perspective. It has USB-C for charging and for connecting things like USB drives, etc. It also allows you to attach and charge your Apple Pencil, which is super handy. And all 2020 iPad Pro models come with six gigabytes of RAM, and even the entry-level model features 128 gigabytes of flash storage, which is great. The iPad Pro is also the only model to support the second-generation Apple Pencil, which again can attach right to the top of your iPad Pro to charge it in for pairing. And the second generation Apple Pencil has a sensor in it. When you double tap, you can switch between different tools based on the current application that you're using. So that's, that's pretty awesome as well. Now in my original 2018 iPad Pro review, I called it a tamed beast because it had beastly hardware, but it didn't have the type of software yet to take advantage of that hardware. Now the software and the external accessories are beginning to catch up to the hardware prowess. But it's good to know that the 2020 model isn't a huge jump over the 2018 iPad Pro. They're basically the same outside of one unlocked GPU core that results in a little bit better graphics performance. But if you can find the 20, 2018 model on sale, I highly recommend it. But here's the real cool thing about the iPad Pro. Both the 2018 model and the 2020 model work with the Magic Keyboard, which features an integrated trackpad that works with the new iPad OS trackpad feature, which basically turns your iPad Pro into a laptop, much more than a smart keyboard would turn your iPad into a laptop. This is a bona fide laptop. It features a trackpad. It features a great keyboard with excellent key travel. Now you'll definitely have to pay for the privilege because this accessory, the Magic Keyboard, is not cheap, starting at $299, but it is so good. Be sure to watch my review for more. Now the biggest change with the 2020 model is the inclusion of a 12 megapixel wide and a 10 megapixel ultra wide camera on the rear. You also get that LiDAR scanner and it doesn't do a whole lot right now, but in the future you're going to see this thing do some really cool things with augmented reality. So while some of the lesser models feature okay cameras, if you're really bent on shooting video or photos with an iPad, there is no better model to do so with than the iPad Pro. And with that 2020 model, you can use that dual camera system in software to seamlessly zoom out and zoom in just like that. You'll still need plenty of light to make it look good, but this is the best camera you'll find on an iPad. And the iPad Pro features the true depth camera, giving you face ID unlock. There's no home button, so everything's controlled with gestures. And don't forget that the iPad Pro features the ProMotion display that gives you that high refresh rate that makes for super smooth, silky text scrolling when you're scrolling through websites and things like that. And some game developers actually take advantage of the ProMotion display as well, so that's really cool. So there's no doubt about it, if you're looking to be the most productive that you can be, if you're looking for the best iPad hardware and you don't mind paying for it, the iPad Pro is where it's at. So hopefully this was able to help you determine which iPad is for you. I still think most people would be good with an iPad 7. For those that value portability over everything else, of course there's the iPad mini, which is super nice. And for those that don't wanna pay for the iPad Pro, but want a pro-like experience, there's the iPad Air 3. And of course, last but not least, the beast, the iPad Pro with that magic keyboard. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5 
Mac. Special thanks to Zugu Case for sponsoring 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube. Zugu Case makes the Muse Case a legendary case for iPad users because it features a built in eight angle adjustable stand and it's built to last with industry leading drop protection. Plus, the Muse Case features built in Apple Pencil storage, which will prove to be extremely handy for seventh generation iPad users. Check the link in the description where you can find the Zugu Muse Case in a variety of different colors. Special thanks to Zugu for sponsoring 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube.